So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and look what I got here. I would like to show you this slide here. Um, it's a pretty old slide, it's an antique microscope slide and it shows the cross section of uh, a four month old fetus. Well, not the fetus itself, but the finger um, of a four month old fetus. So let me put this box away here first. And uh, I would like uh, to uh, put it under the microscope and to have a look at the different parts um, of uh, this specimen. Let me focus this a little bit uh, first. As you can see on the slide label here, yeah, it says here a section finger of fetus four months and there is the number 18 here uh, printed in the lower uh, right hand corner. I think uh, that this is actually the space uh, to write uh, the date, the year. It's not been filled out uh, but actually it shows that the slide label here must be from the 1800s so it's an antique microscope slide yeah, and if you just uh, hold it here you can actually see it's uh, or I can feel it's quite heavy. Well, the slide is also relatively thick, uh, much thicker than the modern microscope slides that we have and it's also polished here so it's actually the quality is quite nice. Um, the cross section of the finger was mounted. Uh, unfortunately I do not know in which mounting medium there's not a lot of information on the slide label but it was also ringed uh, quite nicely and uh, unfortunately the paint has come off a little bit. This kind of shows that apparently the slide was stacked on top of other slides. Yeah, but otherwise I'm quite happy that I was able to obtain uh, this uh, specimen here. And I just can say if you yourself are making microscope slides, uh, permanent microscope slides, um, please do put the complete information on it, uh, including a date and maybe also the mounting medium used because who knows, maybe in 100 years or 200 years, um, maybe somebody is going to start to rediscover your slides and is going to start to collect them. But in any case, uh, what I would like to do now is I would like to put this uh, yeah, old antique microscope slide now under the microscope and uh, there are a few interesting parts uh, that I would like uh, to show you. And in order to get a better overview, I then uh, decided uh, to take an image of the whole specimen and to stitch it together. And uh, this already reveals uh, quite a bit of structural detail. So this here is now um, at low magnification using my four times uh, objective. I'm just going to give you an overview first. It's a traditional histological slide. Um, it's stained. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, I do not know which stain was used, uh, but we can see that there are already a few uh, structures here. And I was able to identify a few of them. Of course, uh, a four month old fetus is not fully developed yet. Therefore, some of the structures are also not fully developed, but there are a few things that I was able, able to recognize. Now I'm going to start out here. This is the region of the fingernail and I was able to see individual cells here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, yeah, go up uh, with the magnification a little bit uh, and then we're going to have a look at some individual cells. So this is now using my 40x um, uh, objective and this is actually one of the parts, one of the few parts in the specimen um, where it is possible to see actually individual cells. On the other parts the cells are clumped together quite a bit. Now I do not know if this is actually the region where the fingernail is going to start to form. Um, the tissue of uh, a fetus of course are not uh, fully developed yet so everything is still very soft so maybe this is actually the region where um, the fingernail is going to form. Now I've also found um, a few other uh, interesting parts uh, at the side um, of uh, the finger especially there where there is the skin so we're just gonna go there right now all the way to the other side here and here we are now on, on the surface here you can see that the skin is a little bit uh, stronger pigmented and uh, there is um, an interesting part that I would like to show Show you here uh, there's a little fold over here but maybe you're able to see those um, yeah those parallel uh, structures here those parallel lines yeah and uh, I wonder what they are actually I think I do know what they are I'm going to just uh, uh, point uh, use the arrow to point uh, look at these things here what what could they be yeah and I think that these are indeed the ducts um, of uh, some sweat glands or possibly maybe oil glands and so these are the ducts or at least the ducts that are going to develop and here at the yeah uh, end here this this must be actually the place where you can find uh, the actual glands um, the ducts normally um, should be um, hollow on the inside I was not able to see that maybe that's because um, everything is still in development so I can imagine that those structures of here are maybe the actual sweat uh, glands and then the ducts they lead to the outside to the surface of the skin and this is where, where the sweat then is, is released yeah when we go actually to the surface uh, maybe I'm able to find this 
this. Um, occasionally, maybe you can see this here, it's difficult to see, but there is actually a small, tiny little opening here as well. And I can imagine this opening is the opening for this uh, particular duct here. Right. Um, yeah. So it's a little bit uh, difficult to see, but uh, indeed, I do think that these are uh, secreting some some uh, substances to the surface of the skin. Now, when we go back um, again uh, to the other side of the specimen, it's so no, it's it's so big that uh, it's sometimes maybe difficult to actually see. Um, the structures. I would like to show you something very unique uh, over here. Look at this here. Do you see this? Uh, this is, uh, I don't know if uh, you actually recognize what that is. This should not be there. Let's go up a little bit with magnification. Yeah, so he, here we are again. <laughs> what could this be? <laughs> yeah, this should not be here. Uh, these are, uh, these look remarkably similar to the silica shells of radiolarians. Uh, these are also very popular microscopy specimens. Radiolarians are um, uh, well, protists, single cell microorganisms uh, living in water, and they have uh, beautiful cells, uh, shells uh, made of silica. And these actually look like the fragments of those. And uh, um, now you might kind of wonder, what in the world do they have? Uh, why do we have these fragments here on the specimen of the of, of the fetus? Uh, Finger, and I think the reason is is that the, whoever prepared this slide might um, probably also prepared slides of these radiolarians, and maybe he or she used the same tools, and therefore there was a cross contamination happening. So if you use a tiny little brush, for example, for positioning um, this specimen here, and if they used the same brush for manipulating those radiolarians, then of course that's quite uh, easily possible uh, that there are some cross contaminations. And look here, also one over here. Um, so and as a matter of in fact, on this slide, I found several instances um, of these uh, radiolarian shells. I was also able to find uh, these uh, brown looking clumps here. And uh, this uh, is most likely coagulated, clotted red, the clotted red blood cells here um, inside a blood vessel. So you can see over here the walls uh, of the blood vessel. And I think that this is uh, blood because uh, hemoglobin, which is the red pigment inside the red blood cells, this hemoglobin when it uh, breaks down uh, then it will actually change its color and become brownish uh, like this one over here so I do indeed think that this is inside a blood vessel and look and there is uh, some further evidence for this if you go here all the way to the end here yeah, maybe you can actually see this here. I think uh, this rounds opening here, that could actually be the, you know, the end of the blood vessel and when it's cut through, then essentially you're able to see the, the opening here. So, and on the other side, I was also able to see that this uh, blood vessel or what I suppose to be a blood vessel. Look, it continues over here, all the way over here. It goes on, it goes on, and look what happens here, okay? Um, yeah, it starts to branch up here, yeah, into, I think, also over here, um, and then um, up here as well. So, indeed, it could be um, either an artery or a vein that's actually branching up here, and I uh, was also quite uh, happy that I was able to find this. As a matter of fact, um, there were also some other places where I found those uh, uh, brownish uh, blood clots, uh, and here in the center is another thing that I would like to show you. These are, look uh, like interesting fibers uh, yeah, running in parallel. When I saw this the first time, I was kind of wondering what could this be? Um, and uh, when we zoom in further, so I'm going from 20 times uh, to 40 times, yeah, I always have to refocus also a little bit. Look what we're able to see here. Yeah, those uh, parallel structures here, these are most likely collagen fibers. Collagen is a very tough protein. And what we're looking here is, is most likely the so-called tendon um, of uh, the finger. The tendon are those uh, structures that connect the bone uh, to the muscles. And those uh, fine uh, lines that you see here, those fine parallel running lines, uh, that's very typical of, of, um, of collagen protein. Yeah. So uh, let, let me uh, zoom out again a little bit so that you get a better overview. Don't go down also a little bit with the light intensity. So I'm back here now at uh, 10 time mag 10 time magnification. Yeah, and uh, here we can actually see yeah those uh, those tendons much better.
Also somewhat of a surprise was this structure here. So I'm changing a little bit uh, the contrast uh, using uh, the, by shifting the prism. N notice this here, what could this be? It was a little bit of a surprise. It looks very, very suspiciously, suspiciously similar to some hair, but what in the world uh, does hair have to do here, right? And this is in the middle of the specimen and normally you would expect the hair to be found in so-called hair follicles. These are the, the little structures that actually give rise to the hair, but this one actually is right in the middle here. Um, and um, I was initially very happy when I found that. I says, wow, great. Uh, I could even find some hair <laughs> on this finger. But the finger, that's not a normal place where you have normally hair growth, especially not in a four-month-old fetus. And I think that this one here too is uh, or might be a, a contamination because uh, what we normally would expect is, is uh, to find uh, these uh, little hair on the surface um, of, uh, of the specimen, on the surface of the skin, and not right here in the middle of the specimen itself. Itself. So yeah, I, I probably put this uh, also into the category of, uh, of of a contamination, but I'm not quite sure. But uh, it would be rather surprising if this were indeed a, a part of uh, of the original specimen. I mean, I consider this uh, quite remarkable. Just look at the size difference here between my finger and the finger of this uh, of the fetus here. Yeah, it's not only the size difference, but also, of course, the age difference. Uh, um, maybe maybe more than a hundred years actually separate us here. I think uh, that I'm going to leave it at that for today. I hope that this little uh, video uh, is uh, still interesting for you. Um, yeah, those uh, antique slides uh, can be quite fascinating as well, especially considering the fact that uh, this slide here might already be over 100 years old. And of course, I would like uh, to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to leave your comments behind, uh, and uh, I would like to wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.